audio w7 8 inch also have here the manual that was sent in the box where it breaks down the specs of the 8w7 so just really quick we're going to talk about the fs which is the top parameter which is the free air resonance right here the fs on the 8w7 is 35 um, I did a lot of research, a lot of Googling. I had a very, very hard time finding a subwoofer in the 8-inch category with an FS as low as 35 or lower. Why is the FS important? Well, that's the resonant frequency of the subwoofer. The lower the FS, typically, in subwoofers, the, the better lows you're gonna hit and the less the less um the less distortion as well in those lows so uh what contributes to a low fs a low fs comes from a really good suspension and a really strong motor so at 35 hertz this subwoofer this loudspeaker is going to be at its best the lowest distortion and the highest output possible can you play lower than 35 absolutely can you play higher yes but when it comes to subwoofers usually you want the lower fs for those better lows deeper lows um you can also play you know 40 45 50 hertz however when you get higher into those frequencies, that's when you want to go into your mid bass. OK, um, another feel and small parameter to look at is the QES, the electrical cue of the of the driver. So QES is measured. Um, basically, all the electromagnetic parts of the speaker, which for the subwoofer, you're talking about the motor and the voice coil. A high QES directly translates to a lot better control, a lot less distortion, okay? Um, what I see a lot out there, um, a lot of subwoofers have decent uh, electrical QES, um, but the hard part is to get the mechanical, the QMS high. A high mechanical QMS directly translates to a lot of control for the cone, the surround, the suspension, the 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 um the positive effect of the basket, the heat dissipation. Um, that is really hard to to get high that value. So. I had a hard time finding an 8 inch subwoofer with a low FS and I had a hard time finding a subwoofer with a high QMS. All right. And all that translates to is the total speaker, the QTS. So there's a there's an equation. I believe it's you multiply the QES and the QMS and then you divide that by the factor of itself and that's what you get the qts i'm sorry i probably butchered that explanation but overall uh higher qts you're looking more towards well we're, let me say this a qts between three and five so 0 0.3 and 0 0.5 you're looking at your subwoofers leaning more towards a ported enclosure or a base reflex box, okay? Uh, a QTS between, let's say, 6, 5, 0 0.5, 0 0.6, and 0 0.7, you're going to be leaning more towards a sealed enclosure, okay? Um, and 0 0.7 QTS and above that's a subwoofer that is more appropriate for an infinite baffle type of application all right um two more things actually three more um so the thermal power handling 
that's the 500 watts rms continuous a lot of people will tell you don't look at the uh at the maximum watts or whatever look at the rms wattage that that's pretty good okay that's that's fair to say but you guys need to understand that Thiel or what Richard Small and Albert H. Thiel, which invented the Thiel Small parameters in the 1970s, they created all of these specs here to pretty much predict a uh, speaker's behavior. Okay, however, it will act differently in the enclosure that you put it in, whether it's sealed, ported, fourth order, sixth order, T line, a horn enclosure. All of those are going to change uh, the specs here. But for the most part, you can predict a subwoofer's behavior by looking at the specs. So the 500 watts is now in the 2020s, 500 watts is very minimal. There's a lot of high power aids. The Sundowns, uh, DC Audios, Digital Designs, and many, many more, okay? But again, RMS uh, power handling isn't everything. You need to look at the SD. So the piston area is the SD, okay? The W7, because of its unique design, has an extremely big surround and an extremely big cone area, surface area. The overall surround, that patented technology that JL has, that allows the cone area to remain the same or larger without having to sacrifice your surround. So this is a big surround, big cone, because you're, you're, you're not having the, the mounting holes or the screw holes around the lip of the sub. So because of this design, the W7 is pushing a lot of air with the cone area and has a high X max with the surround, okay? That is why to me the W7 is one of the best performers, especially with that 500 watt power handling. I'll put this W7A against any other 500 watt eight inch and I guarantee the output will be a lot higher, okay? Um, last thing I wanna talk about is, uh, really important is the efficiency or sensitivity, which aren't really the same, but to keep things short and simple, um, you look at the efficiency here or the SPL, it says one watt at one meter distance and it scored 82.7 decibels, almost 83. You find me another eight inch with the 500 watt power handling, even a thousand watt power handling eight inch that's going to give you those 83 dbs okay i had a hard time googling finding one that is going to be that loud okay especially with 500 watts so the w7 is efficient the design directly translates to performance and it has ex uh, extremely high and accurate precise motor control suspension control and output with the surround and the the large cone area okay these specs aren't everything though just keep that in mind again the box you put it in the amplifier you're using if your box is too small or too big the subwoofer is going to sound very poor if the amplifier you have has high distortion and uh just is not a very high quality amp it's going to affect the performance of your sub so it all uh it all relates to one another but you can generally predict a subwoofer's behavior with these specs